Greetings and salutations. Greetings and salutations. Happy Wednesday, y'all. Welcome to Tea Time with Tanya. Let's start today off with an affirmation for the collective, an affirmation for us to carry with us this day. Dear universe, dear creator, dear spirit guides, please give us the collective words of wisdom to carry with us this Wednesday. Ah, we get mutual love. Look at this card, mutual love. Love is seeking me just as I am seeking it. Just as my love swoons and bursts into wondrous colors and lights, the love that is seeking me is also infinite. The love that I put out in the world will circle back to me. Mutual love, y'all. Mutual love. Throw it out there so that it can come back to you. Namaste. Let us choose an oracle card for today as well. Universe, creator, spirit, guides, please select an oracle card for us this day. Ah, we get the divine feminine. We've got, well, nope. It's that we are at the new moon. We have the divine feminine. I will re I will select this one just as the universe wants. The divine feminine. And we had this this uh card, we had the uh, consort to this card on Monday's show. We had the masculine, the divine masculine, which is that. It is the moon with a moon. And this way. This is the Divine Feminine. Learn something every day, y'all. The Divine Feminine is a receptive, creative, empathetic, and emotional in her highest aspect. She represents collaboration, nurturing, sharing, birthing, inclusiveness, and vulnerability in perfect harmony with the world around her. Drawing this card can indicate that more of the divine feminine energy is required for you and your current situation or relationship to thrive. This card can also represent mother-sister relationships and powerful relationships with women. The, simple, the symbol is the triple goddess. This is a pagan symbol for maiden mother and crone, all right? And y'all, just because it said that, I'm going to show you. This is, this is my representation of the divine feminine, maiden, mother, and crone. Y'all pick up one. All right, there we go, there we go. Hello, everybody. Let me go ahead and jump on into this show because I asked y'all for, for questions and good gosh almighty, y'all definitely answered. So here we go. I've got lots of questions for today. My first question is from Denny. Denny would like to know, will the Republicans ever figure out that they are not the party of Jesus as they claim? Denny, Oh my goodness, that is such a wonderful question. And this question is wonderful because a lot of people who are mixing uh, politics and their religion, that is a double-edged sword and it cuts both ways. Denny, I'm gonna say no. The Republicans are not going to figure out that they are not following what their Christ would have done, okay? simply because there's a whole 10 commandments that the people on the GOP break every every day, okay? So I'm not gonna get into the theology of it, but I will talk about the human condition. And the human condition is these people 
Republicans have been given somebody to hate. Republicans have been given someone to look down on. Republicans have been given a, a false sense of what is strength and what is weakness. And they have chosen to stand behind the weakest individuals on this planet, the most murderous, lying, thieving, vicious, self-serving individuals is who the, the Republicans stand behind and lend their support to. Even though the man that they want to elect for a president those that are in high places will call him a criminal. Those who are in high places will call him a liar, will call him a cheat. And by those who are in high places, I'm talking about uh, men like Bill Barr, Ted Cruz, um, men like Chris Christie, who will sit there and tell the whole world that Donald Trump is a criminal that he lied about January 6th, that he did, he knows that he lost the election, but these men will still stand on television in your face, calling this man a criminal, a despot, and a liar. And, they, and when asked, they will still vow to, uh, to hold him higher than everyone else. This is why we are where we are. The people who have chosen Trump have chosen the devil. The people who have chosen Trump have chosen to follow the devil. Okay? And that is the simplest way that I can put it. Because it is a choice and that is a choice that they have made and they stand behind. They know he's a criminal. They don't care. They know he's a rapist. They don't care. They know he's a con man. They don't care. They know that he is the one who talks about everybody when they hurt his feelings and then will turn around and call those people weak when it is him that is the weak one. The GOP has chosen. They are hauling water for a despot, for a criminal, for a nothing, for a demon, if you want to call it that. They have chosen and they have wrapped their religion in with it. So no, Denny, no. The Republicans won't figure out that they aren't the party of Christ because they have created Christ in their image. Denny's next question is, will the male Mail carriers, oh, I'm sorry. Mail carriers didn't receive pay because of a glitch. Was it due to DeJoy playing around and messing with their system? Universe creator, spirit guides, tarot, please tell us, did the postal workers not receiving their pay have anything to do with Louis DeJoy? at all, in any way, shape, or form. Did what happened with the mail carrier's pay have anything to do with DeJoy? The first card out we get is the Ace of Cups. That is a giant yes, and we got the Wheel of Fortune behind it. We've got Death, the Knight of Cups, and the Queen of Cups behind that. Y'all, okay, prepare. I've been telling y'all, prepare for these strikes that are about to happen. So the answer to Denny's question is yes. Somehow, some way, DeJoy had something to do with the the uh, postal workers not getting their paychecks. DeJoy is going to be looking at a whole lot of loss. Um, people leaving, quitting, just straight up quitting. But you may also, what may happen, we may have a whole blue flu, y'all. We could very well have where nobody who works for the post office shows up for work one day. And guys, I know we've been talking about these strikes and how important it is. And I know how important us getting our mail is. 
But sometimes we got to bite the bullet and take one for the team. Guys, if the United States Postal Service came to a screeching halt, that would efficiently put this, it would put the brakes on this whole country so hard that it would affect the majority of the wealthiest business owners. Okay, understand, the mail is as important as our freeways are. Okay, the mail is as important as our cell phones are. So, the answer is yes. DeJoy, DeJoy is playing around with this, but this is going to come to an end. And guys, again, like I, I keep saying, we are in times of change. The only way to fix the system that we are in is for this system to be destroyed brick by brick, straw by straw. We cannot put band-aids on it and call it fixed. The United States Constitution was written by wealthy white land-owning men for wealthy white land-owning men. Almost all of the founders of our Constitution owned other people. And the people that they owned are not represented in the Constitution, except for as slaves. Okay, even the 13th Amendment, which took away slavery somewhat, except for when the state decides that if you are a prisoner, then it is absolutely okay for you to be a slave. Understand this. And guys, I know I'm kind of jumping, but this is important. The United States criminal justice system, the prison system, is a slavery system. I said it. I will not take it back. It is legalized slavery all over the United States, and it's in the Constitution. People who have been put in jail have no say about how or where they work. They are slaves, not indentured servants. They are slaves. The most important thing right now to know is to know what our Constitution says. And guys, it's a little book. It's only this big. You can read the entire United States Constitution in, oh, about 30 minutes. And that's if you're a slow reader. There is nothing hard about reading that document. There's nothing hard about understanding that document. But there is a whole lot wrong with people quoting that document who have no idea what is actually in that document and what it says and what it supports, okay? I keep telling y'all this government was not, this government does not work for you and me, all right? This government was built by the 1% for the 1%. It protects its own, okay? Just know that. So my uh, next question about DeJoy, will DeJoy still be the postmaster during the 2024 elections. Will DeJoy still be the postmaster general? Will he still be over the secretary, whatever he is? Will he still be over the United States Postal Service during the 2024 election? Universe Spirit Guides Creator, Tarot, please tell us. Will Louis DeJoy, will Louis DeJoy still be over the United States Postal Service during the 2024 election. Here we go. Yes or no. Oh, the first card we get is strength, and we got the devil in the walking away card. But right behind that, we've got the sun, which is a big yes. Now, this is, this is a mixture of yeses and nos, guys. So what I'm kind of feeling here, now, when I get this, strength card and we're talking about the GOP. Yeah, I know that the strength card inverted is is abuse of power. 
But anytime we are talking about the GOP and this card comes out, this is abuse of power. So the the answer, unfortunately, is yes. The joy is still going to be postmaster during the 2024 election. However, he should be somehow, some way on his way out of that position. So I think that's why I got this great big old maybe that they're going to be trying to get rid of him because we've got the devil and we've got this tied and bound card, the eight of um, swords, okay? And this is my somebody's going to jail card or somebody's about to get hemmed up. But what I see in this throw is that whatever is going on, the GOP are going to try to keep Louis DeJoy in that position as long as possible. And yes, there's going to be a whole lot of in your face sabotaging going on around the 2024 election. It is going to be irrevocably broken, okay? The GOP are going to do all kinds of heinous things, break all kinds of laws, steal ballots even to try to sh and, and shut down. I see them shutting down voting places to, to and lying to try to turn people away to so that they won't have, have the ability or opportunity to vote. But the answer to this is uh, yes. Uh, DeJoy is going to be, he's still gonna be postmaster during the 2024 election, but he will be on his way out. We will be fighting, trying to get him out while the GOP are fighting, trying to keep him in. There you go. All right. My next question. Will prisons ever get proper medical care for prisoners? And this is a big thing, guys. Our, our prisons, state prisons, local jails, federal prisons are terrible places. And I speak from a power of authority because I worked there, okay? Horrible. And I will be the first to tell you, the uh, prisoners get less, they get horrible health care, terrible health care, okay? And they're forced to pay for it. Four dollars, and it may not seem like much to you, all right? But consider this. In Arizona, when, when I retired, it may have gone up. When I retired in Arizona <clears throat> from the Department of Correction, if an inmate wanted to go to medical, then he had to fill out his, his form and he had to pay a $4 fee. Now, here's the thing. Yes, inmates in, in prison are given jobs. But here's the thing, most of the jobs that prisoners get pay 10 cents an hour, that's 10 pennies per one hour of work. So you do the math, $4 or 4,000 pennies, 4,000 pennies, that's 400 hours of work that it would take for an inmate who does not have money coming in from the streets or from his family. That's how much work, how many hours it would cost for him to pay for that doctor visit where he will sit handcuffed maybe, maybe for hours to see somebody who will tell them, I think you're faking. Go back to your cell. You're wasting my time. Who will not even look at them or give them the help that they need. And I speak again. I speak from experience. I'm not talking out of my backside. I was there. This is what I saw. Okay? So let's ask this question. Will prisons ever get, will they ever re- rebuild the system 
to where prisoners get proper medical care? Yes or no, Carol, please tell us. First card out. We got that tied and bam. But here we go. We've got some yeses again. So as things are now, we've got some yes, but it will take a fight. Things can get better for prisons, but it is going to take redoing, revamping, tearing down the old and building up the new. Okay, for people to get treated like people. So yes, Denny, it can happen. Right now it is broken and they are fighting to keep it broken. But if we put our energy into it, this is something that can be rectified. My next question is from Preston. This is an interesting question. Thank you for this. Preston asks, is Jim Jordan, and y'all, this is for entertainment purposes only, is Jim Jordan like Lindsey Graham? Is Lindsey, is Jim Jordan like Lim, Lindsey Graham? And by like Lindsey Graham, I mean, is Jim Jordan a closeted homosexual? And I have a second part of this question, but let's ask this from Tarot first. And there's nothing wrong. I'm gay, y'all. So ain't nothing wrong with being gay. But there is something wrong with people who are gay, who try to make life harder for, for other gay people. All right? And there's, there's something wrong with people who are gay, who target ch children or persons who cannot give their consent to whatever is going on, all right? Here we go. Is Jim Jordan in the closet? Spirit guides, tarot, universe, creator, please answer this question. Is Jim Jordan a closeted gay man? We got a lot. We got wands, wands, wands. And then emotion. And here we go. And we, with all these wands, y'all, we got the ace of wands. Here we go. Yes. And he is hiding. Um, Jim Jordan is waiting for his proverbial ship to come in. But this is a man who is looking on the horizon. This is a liar. He's a, he's a thief. He's a cheat. This man has no honor at all. He looks to take from those who have. He's, he's a, he's a bad, bad man for entertainment purposes only. There's a lot of things coming for Jim Jordan. There is some litigation that is coming for him that he himself has opened the door to. And, and once, once he gets these arrows thrown at him, he's going to try to run and hide, but he opened this door. So he's going to try to run and hide. The answer to this question, though, uh, uh, Preston, is yes. Jim Jordan is in the closet. Jim Jordan will use his religion and everything to try to say that he, that he is not that. But Tarot says that he is. Second part of this question. With a yes on the first part, was Jim Jordan involved in what transpired with the students, athletes in Ohio. Was Jim Jordan in any way, shape, or form responsible or involved in any of the crimes against children that happened at Ohio State? Here we go, Universe Creator Spirit Guides. Was Jim Jordan involved in any way, shape, or form in what happened at Ohio State? Yes or no? Ah, yep, last card. And here's here's the first card, y'all. Jim Jordan has, tried, has been trying to get as far away from this talking point as he can. The answer is yes. But here's all the getting away from it. He has tried to put distance and space between him and this question. Here's the answer, though. Yes, absolutely. 
He was involved in this. He was a facilitator for entertainment purposes only. He was a part of all of this heartbreak. And guys, he will receive his karma, whether we get to see it or not. Every day this man gets up, he is living in his own karma. These people are miserable. They are miserable. They don't find joy in the ordinary things. And I'm going to talk about Omargarine, Taco Grease, Matt Gates, all of them. All of them. We see them getting out and, and spewing their hatred and vitriol all over the place. And we think that they're getting away with something. They are not. They are not getting away with anything. Every time they close their eyes, every time they lay their head down, they are immersed in their own personal hell, a hell in which there is no escape from. Every time they close their eyes, they live in the shit world that they have created for themselves. The things that they try to manifest don't happen or happen backwards. Everything that they go after is fraught with pitfalls. They, they're having to pay more money for things that aren't that expensive. Things are breaking down on them. They keep losing things. So just because we don't see it doesn't mean that karma is not smacking them upside the head, left, right, and center every doggone day. Every doggone day. Sometimes it's better that we don't know what people are facing. All right? Sometimes it's better. But just know, the universe works in the universe's own way. All right? People don't have to die to face their karma. Your karma is faced while you are still breathing. When you die, you just go back into the energy field. All right? You're not carrying baggage with you. Everything that you suffer you suffer while you are in this avatar. There you go. My next question is about Matt Gates, And the same question goes for Matt Gates, because Matt Gates came up about three years ago talking about he has a son that's not his flesh and blood that's only about eight years younger than he is. Is Matt Gates a closeted gay man? Is Matt Gates a closeted gay man? But I want to say something to y'all about these men in power. Sex is a weapon. They Just because they have sex with a man doesn't make them gay. All right? They use sex as a weapon, as a tool, and also as a way to punish people. But let's ask this question this way. Is Matt Gates a closeted gay man? Here we go. Yes or no? Your first part, first and second card out. Yes, and almost the same thing. Here we go. Is Matt Gates a closeted gay man? Tarot says, hells yeah. Yep, he likes it. Yes, he does. Maybe that's why we got all these rods, all right? Again, he got the same thing um, that Jim Jordan got. Another one standing there on the precipice waiting for something to happen. All of these guys are waiting for their this next uh, thing to fall. Matt Gates, though, this is a, another special kind of horrible person. This man, you want to talk about somebody who wants to be the next Jeffrey Epstein? Let, let's talk about this guy. That's what he has his, his sight set on. All right? He wants to be the one. This is a man who is in bed with uh, child traffickers. And just know this. Anytime these people are trafficking little girls, just know they don't just, no, no, they don't just traffic in women because there's a whole lot of people that buy little boys, okay? Probably more buy little boys than buy little girls, if you want to be perfectly honest about it, okay? It's a, it's a weapon. It's about power. It's not about pleasure. This is about taking somebody else's body and using it, abusing it, harming them, hurting them, and then telling that person that they don't have the right to complain about what is being done to them. All right? 
Next part of Matt Gates's question. Will Matt Gates be indicted on human trafficking or on his involvement with January 6th? Will Matt Gates be indicted on human trafficking charges or will he be indicted for his involvement in January 6th? Universe Creator, Spirit Guides, please tell us yes or no. Will Matt Gates be indicted for any of the crimes that he wanted that blanket pardon for? Yes or no. First card out is a yes. Yes, yes, yes. All right, here we go. First card out for Matt Gates is the judgment card. He is going to have to face what he has done. The Hierophant comes up. He's going to be trying to hide behind religion and everything else and using his power, his position in Congress or the Senate, wherever he's sitting. He is going to be using his power for evil. He is going to be trying to hide all the things that he has done. But there is a permanent record. Matt Gates has gone on television and spoken. All right. He has spoken. He has shown his hand. Matt Gates will be shown to be the traitor that he is. Matt Gates will be shown to be the traitor that he is. All of his abuse of power will be brought into the light. Okay? So, yes, the answer is yes. Matt Gates will be indicted for the crimes that he has committed. It's just going to take a little time, y'all. We've got a whole bunch of crooked people running every aspect of our American uh, government. We've got crooked people in our uh, Justice Department. We've got crooked judges. We've got crooked cops. We've got crooked politicians. So there's a whole lot of work that has to be done before these people before these people's turn at justice comes up, okay? And this is where we as a collective, when we change our mindset, things happen, okay? The first thing I'm going to ask you guys is to stop caring so much about what is happening in the political scheme. Stop caring. Develop an IDGAF. I don't give a flying flip what these people are doing. This is important. When you take yourself out of the equation, things change. If you are worried and fretting, your energy could be holding the whole collective stagnant in the energy that we don't want to be in. If you want to change your situation, you don't focus on the problems that you are having. You focus on where you want to be. So if we are cons constantly complaining and dragging ourselves, dragging this dead body of politics behind us, we will never move out of that and into our bright future. Everything in politics right now is to keep us divided, to keep us separated, and to keep us distracted from what is really going on. Everything in our government is to keep us broken and divided so that we do not come together. Because the moment that we stand up and behave like those Mobile, Alabama boys did when that boy took off his hat and threw it in the air. He mobilized. He didn't even know he had a whole army. He had a whole army. Every one of us has our very own army. We only have to connect with them. And that is what has been taken from us. And that is what they are trying their very best to do, is to keep us separate, disconnected from each other. Because the moment that we come together and stand up, we can defeat the elite. 
and it won't even be hard. It is just bringing our mindsets together. And that's what they're keeping us from doing. So the answer is yes, he will be indicted. My next question is from Beautiful Girl. Beautiful Girl asks, will escaped convict Dan Danello Cavalcante I think I said that right. Danello Daniello Cavalcante will escape convict Daniello Cavalcante be found and uh, taken back to prison alive. Um, this man beat his girlfriend to death in front of her babies. And now he's got out of jail and he's got his hands on a gun. Will Daniello Cavalcante be found and taken into custody alive? Yes or no? Oh, guys. Guys. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness, guys. Okay. Um. The answer is no, not no, um, and we're, there's going to be more loss behind this. Daniel, Daniello Cavalcante is, is going to kill somebody else while he is on the lam. Um, there's, people are in danger. This is, this is a dangerous man. He does not want to go back to prison, um, and if they catch him, He's going to do everything he can, shoot at the cops. But this man is, he is a danger. The final card we got on this is the tower moment, okay? He's in his tower. He is going to cost a, the United States a whole bunch of money on this manhunt. I feel like they may find him, but I don't have the death card. I don't have the death card signalizing that he may be taken out. While this man is on the land, he is dangerous. People are in danger. He is going to commit more crimes. He is going to commit more murders. Whether or not he is taken alive or not, I'm not getting that yet. He may be apprehended. Here, let me get a clarifier. Spirit guides, universe creator, yes or no? Give me concrete. Will, yes or no? Will Daniel, Daniello Cav Cavalcante be found? Will he be found and rearrested? Yes or no? Will he be found and rearrested? And now we got the death card. Here we go. Okay. All right. There it is. I understand now. Daniel Cavalcante, they're going to find him. And there's going to be a shootout. Um, and some people are going to die. Maybe some police officers are going to get hit in this shootout. Uh, but Daniel Cavalcante will be found. But I feel like he, not only is he going to cause more death, but that he will die in a shootout with the police. There you go, guys. There you go. Whew, for entertainment purposes only, y'all. My next question from Beautiful Girl is, why did Roz Brewer, the first black CEO of Walmart, step down after only two years as the CEO of Walmart. Why did Roz Brewer, the first black CEO of Walmart, step down, universe creator, spirit guides, please speak through me, speak only the truth. The first thing that I am being told is that she became privy of what the actual game plan for Walmart is. Everybody must be made aware of this. Walmarts are closing. 
Walmarts are going to close all over the place, especially in big cities that have multiple Walmarts. You're going to be reduced to maybe one or two Walmarts. It doesn't, ma it doesn't even matter how big the town is. They're going to close these Walmarts. Prices are going to skyrocket. This is the next thing that is going to happen. Most Walmarts, when, when this happens, are going to go 90%. You won't have a, a human person to, to contact. Uh, the shelves will be stocked by robots, and you will have to self-check out your own stuff. Okay? This is what's coming down. This is what the elite are planning. And it's not just Walmarts, guys. A lot of stores will be phasing out, closing excess stores, centralizing what they're doing. Again, AI came into being this year because it is going to take over. AI is going to take jobs that normal human beings normally have. Okay, understand this. The advent of AI is going to hurt a lot of people. But let's go ahead and see what Tarot has to say about Roz Brewer. Universe creator, Tarot, spirit guides, please tell us why did Roz Brewer step down after only two years? of being the CEO at Walmart. Oh, first thing came out, she got the wealth card. She got the money card. She was being paid a lot of money, but she wasn't being paid what she thought she should have been paid to be the CEO of Walmart. She saw firsthand what was going on. First card for Roz Brewer is the opulence card. This is filthy rich, y'all. Look at her. She's holding this little uh, falcon. You know, she's a falconer. She's got money just growing on bushes, just like um, the grapes behind her, flowing like wine. So she had it made being the CEO of Walmart. And then something funny with the money started happening. And Roz Brewer said, oh, it's time for me to get on out of here before everything goes wrong. And guys, this is part of it. They're trying to keep this very, very, very quiet um, about this, this, this big company about to downsize severely. Roz Brewer came to her own personal crossroads and she had to make this decision. And guys, it is important. Look at these cards because... She 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 had she was on a timeline. She was on a timeline that she had to make a decision. And I feel like time kind of got away from her, ran out, and she had to say, No, I've got to go. There was some obstruction. There's some things coming that Walmart has in store for every single one of us, y'all. But Walmart has some things coming. They are gonna put some things in our way to make our lives harder. But here's our answer. Here's the yes. Oh, I'm sorry. There, that wasn't it. Why did she leave? She was uh, feeling a little bit beat down, beat up. All right. She was feeling like she, she had to get out of the way, but she had to get out of the way. She had a decision to make and she was on a timeline to make it. And she chose to walk away instead of to stand and fight, even though she was making crazy money as the CEO, but she was still making less than she should have been. All right, there you go. There you go. There you go, beautiful girl. Uh, Roz Brewer left because of she knew what was coming down. They put something on her. She had a decision to make in a short amount of time, and she chose to take her money that she had already made and run away and leave them to their own devices. But understand, y'all, there's going to be a whole lot of changes in Walmart. There's going to be a whole lot of changes. Just prepare yourself for this.
My next question is from Carmen B. Carmen asks, since Abbott has already sent 14 busloads of immigrants to Los Angeles, how many more will be sent? How many more is he going to be able to send until he faces some type of legal consequence? Universe Spirit Guides, Tarot Creator, please answer this question. How long will 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 it take until Greg, Greg Abbott faces consequences of his human trafficking? Because that is what he is doing. He is taking human, trafficking them across state lines, lying to them, leaving them on somebody else's doorstep. Universe Spirit Guides Creator, tell us when will Greg Abbott face consequences for the human trafficking that he is doing? How long? Y'all, I'm kind of getting this. So I've got 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, then plus 5 and plus 6. 13 plus 11 is 24. Two years. 24 months. Two years. 24 months is how long it's going to take before Greg Abbott is brought to justice for his role in all the human trafficking that he and the state of Texas are facilitating. There you go. And it's two years because we got to get past the 24 election. Guys, the GOP are counting on winning the 24 election to literally turn the United States into a criminal nation, a nation that lets its criminals get off. This is what they are pinning their hopes on. If they can win the presidency so that their guy can pardon them, this is what their plan is. They want a, a Republican, whether it's Donnie or DeSantis, they want one of those two in office so that he will pardon them for the crimes that they have committed. And unfortunately, y'all, I keep telling y'all that our government don't work for us. So the government itself is right along in this, playing footsie with this, allowing these people to be criminals while protecting them and letting, letting kicking the can down the road until the next guy who comes into office can act on it. All right, there you go. Whew. My next question is from Must Be Heard. And this is a personal question. And this is about Twitch Boss. And y'all know, y'all who follow me know that Twitch came and he visited me for a few days after, after he, after he um, exited this plane of existence. Must Be Heard wants to know, why did Twitch Boss take his own life? And guys, I'm going to tell you what, what the man told me, okay? And what he said was, until you live every day of your life in a family where you give everything, all of yourself, all the time, and you are met every day with your, even your children, the fruit of your loin, disrespecting you. To, this, to the point of even calling you a racial slur. And the, 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 the mother of those children failing to see the harm in allowing a child to be able to speak, spew whatever she wants to say. And I say she, because this is what, he told me, 
he went to that hotel room after and 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 and, and guys there was a fight there was an argument he left home he left home he left home with his heart in his throat he left home not knowing why the people that he loved the most found it okay to treat him, speak to him the way that they were. It was, this wasn't just one day. This was ongoing. He was literally the, the, the tears of the, the clown. He had that beautiful smile on his face every day. And he was hiding all the secrets that he was hiding. Yes, men can be abused too. Yes, big, black, beautiful, strong men can be victims of abuse from their significant others, whether it's a man or a woman. Family violence is family violence. And the man chose to end his own life so that he wouldn't have to face another moment feeling the way that he felt about the people that he loved the most in this whole world, but treated him like he didn't matter or that he was nothing without them, not that they were nothing without him. Twitch Boss, Twitch Boss was a victim. He was a victim of domestic abuse. And that's what caused him to make the decision to take his life. For entertainment purposes only, y'all. And I say that as a disclaimer, just because I can't get sued by people I don't know. There you go. Oh, all right. There you go. That was hard. Oh, all right. Next question. California just raised service, a uh, server pay to $20 per hour. Thank you, California. Must be heard, would like to know what's going to happen on because of this. Well, a whole lot of people, firstly, are going to get a little raise out of property. That is the first thing that's going to happen. This is the second thing is, Americans, listen to me. Switzerland, I believe Australia, probably Europe, most places. The minimum wage that people make is over, over $20 an hour. Not just $20 an hour, over $20 for an entry level job. So what we as Americans have to do is stop punishing people for trying to have a living way. We need to stop punishing people for wanting to live. The people who own Taco Bells and McDonald's and everything are not living off of $7.25 an hour. No, the CEOs of Taco Bell and McDonald's make well over $1,000 an hour. So if you're if the owner of the company can make $1,000 an hour and they don't work, they have minions that are doing that for them, then why shouldn't the minions at least make $20 an hour? Just to keep them indoors and keep the lights on. We as Americans have to change our mindset. We have let the rich people tell us that we're greedy for wanting more. We are wrong for allowing ourselves to be told by the 1% 
that we want too much, that because we flip burgers or pour coffees, that we the work that we do is not worth us making a wage that can keep us indoors. We have to break our own ignorance. We have to stop hurting ourselves and helping the rich man because ain't nobody stepping up to the rich man and saying it's wrong for you to make a thousand dollars an hour while your workers, the ones who are keeping you rich, can't even live indoors on the amount of money that you pay them to work 40, 50, 60, 70 hours a week uh, or, or 70 hours of pay, uh, pay period. Understand, we have been brainwashed to tell ourselves that we don't deserve to make a living wage if we're flipping burgers. Well, doggone it, people are buying those burgers to survive, so why can't I survive on flipping those burgers? We as Americans have to shake the cobwebs away, pull all of the garbage out of our ears that has been stuffed in there and see the degree of slavery and slave acceptance that we have been placed under. They expect us to look at the person who is making our next meal and look down our nose at them and say, well, they only work at a, at a fast food joint. They don't deserve what I do because I work in an office. No, that's what has to change. Must be heard that $20 an hour is the first step in the right direction. And we all need to fight for it. Okay? They've already raised the price of a doggone hamburger to what? Just to get a whole meal, you're paying $10, $15. Well, doggone it, if you're paying that much money to just get the meal, then the worker who is making the meal should get paid more than the meal that you cost to buy. Right? 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 Okay? That's a good thing. The thing that's going to happen is a whole bunch of people are going to be raised, even if it's only an inch, they're going to get a little raise out of that poverty. Okay? That's what's going to happen. California raising the minimum wage of servers to $20 an hour is the best thing I've heard today. That is good news. That is people working for people. And we should fight with the servers to make sure that they are able to keep that money. Must Be Heard has a second question. She says, companies aren't answering their phones or returning calls. Um, did Biden lie against the, uh, did li Biden lie about the economy? No, no, again, no hero worship here, but the, co the economy is a thing that you can look at and see whether it's doing well or if it's doing poorly. Our economy, even though a lot of people can't afford to live in this economy, the economy itself is doing just fine. There are no problems with the economy. The problems are with um, the amount of money that people have to live on, the amount of extra money that people have to live on. That's where a lot of people feel the crutch. If, if you're not rich, or if you're not um, just financially well-to-do, then every time the gas prices change, every time they raise the price of, of milk, everyone that is in that feels that. Our economy is not where it was when old Donnie Boy was in office. Donnie broke our economy. Donnie gave trillions to the people who have the most money and took money from the people who did not have it to give. 
The reason we have so much homelessness in America right now is directly because of Donald Trump and his policies while he was in office. He gave away the farm. Somebody had to pay for it. Everybody who owned property during 2020, who, when nobody could go to work, nobody could pay their bills, understand. And then we, we made all the landlords say, okay, these people just get a live in your property. Nobody's paying no bills. And then the people who owned the property, when the property was released and, and the workforce came back, these people had to recoup the money that they were, that they lost over the two years that they were losing it. While they couldn't evict people, they couldn't force people to pay them one penny of what was owned them. And these people had owe somebody else. Understand, it's a great big old circle. Now, have these people recouped it? Yes. Yes, they have. Did they need to raise the rents to $2,000 a month? No, they did not, because that is greed. Did they need to raise what, what they had to raise to, to recoup their losses? Yes. Yes, they did. But what they're doing now is pure greed, inhumane, okay? So. Biden didn't break this economy. Donald Trump did. Companies that aren't answering their phones, returning your calls, or being good business people, that is on them. There's a lot of things that are about to change in our, in our little tiny world, especially as far as money is concerned, y'all. All this digital stuff is big. And when, when, when they were going on and on and on about digital currency and, and uh, Bitcoin and everything, y'all, I have been trying to prepare everybody, all of us, for what, has, what is about to transpire. This is nothing that we have any control over. Therefore, ain't no reason to be scared of. But there is a reason to raise your vibration so that every bump in the road is not a catastrophe, catastrophe for you. Raise your elevation. Stop worrying about what these people in the political agenda arena are doing. They, are, they have their own agenda and their agenda is to put Donald Trump back in office by any means necessary. And if they can't do that, then their second uh, option is to completely destroy the United States of America's government. That is what the GOP has planned for us, y'all. Okay? Whew, there you go. Must be heard has another question. Why is Nancy Pelosi running again? 80 something years old. And she still wants to be in Congress. She's been in Congress since she was in her 60s. She's been in Congress since she was my age. She is in her 80s now. Nancy Pelosi is keeping herself in Congress so that she can keep making money. And I don't mean the, the congressional paycheck. I'm talking about the money that she is getting because she is a lobbyist for so many other people. She is a lobbyist and she is being lobbied. She is an inside trader and I don't, I don't hero worship crooks. Okay? Nancy Pelosi has been in the, in the Congress for over 30 years. Absolutely nothing that she ran on to get in office has changed. She has fixed nothing. She is in there to keep herself and her family rich. She is in there to keep her dirty little fingers on everything that she wants her dirty little fingers on. I don't care if she's a Democrat. She's a crook. And I said it. 
because it's true. She sabotaged Obama. Remember, don't have short-term memory syndrome. Obamacare or the Affordable Health Care Act is as broken as it is because Nancy Pelosi did not have the freaking guts, gall, or wherewithal to fight the Republicans when we had the House and the Senate. She allowed the party that did ha didn't have any power to break our health care and to continue keeping it broken because Nancy Pelosi makes money off of a broken health care system. That's why she's running again, because she wants to keep that faucet running, keep that tap wide open. All right. All right. Okay. Whew. My next question is a personal question, so I'm going to switch my, my decks. Um, this is from Must Be Heard too. Must Be Heard asks, is my WC attorney, Mario, being honest? And will he be successful in my case? There's two attorneys on one case. Is the first attorney named Mario? Is Mario being honest? And is he doing his best on the case for Must Be Heard? And will he be successful? Three cards, three questions. Here we go. Is Mario, the attorney Mario, being honest? First card, is Mario being honest? Yes, must be heard. Mario is being honest with you. Second question on Mario. Is Mario doing all that he can to help you in your case? Yes, Mario is doing his best. And three, will Mario be successful in your WC case? Yes, your Mario will be successful in your WC case. You, Your second attorney, oh goodness, did I not write his name down? Okay, I thought I did. There were two names. It was Mario and they were both M's. So, will must be Heard's second attorney. Oh, no, never mind. You, your question was only about Mario. So, yes, must be heard. Mario is being honest. He will be successful in your case, and he is doing the job that you are paying him to do. My next question is from Sharon Y. Sharon wants to know, did the family who's that the 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 alien spacecraft crashed in their backyard. Sharon Y wants to know, did the family actually see aliens? Yes, Sharon. They actually saw aliens. They saw aliens as close to them as your television is to you. Okay? They were in the backyard with the two aliens, over 10 feet tall, ginormous eyes, ginormous mouths. And the mouths, and these aliens, this is a specific a group of aliens. And when they say they had big eyes and they had big mouths, they had very large eyes like this. Okay? Large that took up most of the face. All right? And the mouth was also an, a, a gaping so a uh, circular hole in the face, a large hole, much larger than our mouth. So just, just think of it. Giant eyes, 10 feet tall, giant mouth. They were grayish, greenish creatures, three fingers, and they communicate telepathically. Yes, Sharon, the Las Vegas family saw real aliens and they're all over the place guys this is not new there are more and more and different species flying around and crashing all over the place open your open your mind's eye open all of your receptors and then ask the universe to allow you to see and if you are not afraid and you're vibrating high enough you will see the aliens that walk among us 
or you will be able to sense them if you can't see them. All right? The the biggest thing is you can't be afraid. If you are afraid, you will you your mind will not let you see something that will be disturbing to you. So elevate. Elevate and then ask the universe to allow you to see. And if you are not afraid, you will see. All right? There you go. Next question is a personal one from Sharon Watt. This is about Amy Robach and TJ Holmes, um, the two reporters who got caught in their little lustful affair. A, uh, Sharon wants to know, will uh, Amy and TJ's relationship, will their relationship last beyond 2024? No, no, it will not. Um, let me go ahead and read this. If the relationship ain't already over, it will be coming to a screeching halt. Everything that they done under the moonlight is going to be drug up and laid bare. Um, uh, the path may not be clear, but my intuition lights the way one step at a time. Intuition, illusion, dreams, vagueness, instability, deception, anxiety, fear, misconception, subconscious, and insecurity. The same things that drew those two together are going to rip those two apart because they fell into each other's arms in lust and they're going to push each other away because of suspicion. All right, there you go, Sharon. My next question is from Spirits Beyond the Stars. And this is about Biden and electric cars. And Spirits Beyond the Stars asks, doesn't Biden know that electric cars are not good for the environment? Yes, yes, spirits. Biden knows that. But again, Biden is just the guy who is sitting in the driver's seat for these four years. He controls nothing. The reason that we are still using fossil fuels instead of plain old water is because the powers, the, the actual ones that run the shadow government, the Rockefellers, the, the, uh, those, those names you know, those extremely rich and wealthy people, those families that control everything, won't allow this continent, this, this, this planet to be taken care of. And we have to call it out for what it is because these rich folks act like we got another planet to go to. They act like we have somewhere else to go if they drop a bomb and irradiate us. They act like we can just hop on a, the next ship smoking and go to Mars or Venus or wherever. They do not care about us. They never have. There was never a need for fossil fuels. And there was definitely never a need for us to remain addicted to it. We are where we are because a certain group of people have chosen to keep us here to keep us poor, to keep us enslaved. Understand that these same people are knowingly harming Gaia by poking holes in her crust and drilling and pulling out her essence to make a car or a motorcycle go vroom vroom. Understand that these same people have us clear cutting forests so that we can wipe our asses with the trees. These same people want to cut down even more trees and bury them under the ground so that homeless people will not have shade to rest their weary bones under. You want to talk about what's going on, let's talk about the evil. Let's talk about the abject evil of the people who run the world. 
okay? We ask the wrong questions all the time. We always want to know, well, when, when are the bad guys going to face their karma? When are we going to stand up and stop the bad guys? We ask the wrong questions. When is the world going to be a better, more inhabitable space? When are we going to make the world a better, more inhabitable space? When are we, as a populace, going to stop waiting for someone else to stand up and do what we ourselves need to be doing? Even if all we have to do is change our mindset. So many of us would rather him and ha and complain about what that guy is doing than to look in the mirror and complain about what we ourselves are not doing. To change our world, to fix everything that is broken, all we have to do is fix ourselves. To look in the mirror and stop participating in the degradation of humanity. To take and kick over all them pedestals that you have all these human people sitting on, waiting for them to do something for you that no other politician has done in the entire history of this nation. It is time for us to take accountability for ourselves. It is time for us to stand up, stand together, change our mindset, change the words that we are speaking into existence to make the world what we desire it to be, not to be stuck in the slave matrix that they have created for us, but for us to live in the world that we have created for ourselves because we are the creators. All right, all right. So spirits, Biden knows that the electric cars aren't good for the environment. He has nothing to do with it. He doesn't make them. It's not up to him to say whether you can have them or not. He is just the president, okay? And the electric cars, Everything that's wrong with them is, is about the future. I mean, it's great that you have a car that you don't have to put gasoline into. However, what do you do with the battery when the car no longer works? What happens when those vehicles start to catch fire as they age? What happens when people start to become casualties in a smart car because the car won't let them out when they need to get out. Lots of questions. But again, that has nothing to do with the president, okay? We have to stop blaming people for stuff that is not their fault. And we have to stand in our truth and tell other people to stop blaming somebody for something that is not their fault. If you're going to have the gall to blame people about what they need to be blamed for, then blame the ones who are creating the problems. Blame the electric car manufacturers. They know what their product is going to result in, in the future. Okay? The car manufacturers, the ones who build them, know the impact it's going to have on our environment. So if we're going to call people out, let's call them out. All right. Oklahoma has right-wing gangs. The Spirits Beyond the Stars wants to know, will they get that under control? No. The right-wing gangs, the left-wing gangs, 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 ideology. That's what this is all about. The right-wing gangs you want to talk about, the biggest right-wing gang is the police. The, the, the police department is the number one right-wing gang. Can get away with murder. 
qualified immunity. All they have to say is, I was afraid for my life. But that same defense won't work for you if you're faced with a cop who's got a gun in your face and you've got a gun in your hand and you kill that cop. So all these gangs, this is, this is all of what I've been talking about. The entire system has to be broken, okay? A whole lot of people, especially police, their entire units need to be dissolved reimagined and rebrand rebuilt not rebranded rebuilt destroyed to the ground raised to the ground and rebuilt because what it was built on was a bunch of people doing nothing else than terrorizing Black folks, understand why we have police. The only reason we have police, the reason that they came into being is because wealthy white men decided that they needed a group of armed people to keep their little black folks on the farm. The police department was brought into existence to keep black people enslaved to catch, kill, and return runaway slaves. The police department needs to go. If we don't have slavery, we have no need for police. If we need to start a some type of peaceable uh, peacekeeping group, then we need to build a whole new one. But the police department needs to go because the police department was built was invented as a slave catching mechanism. And if there is no more slavery, then we do not need police. We always had the sheriffs. They were elected officials that were supposed to be the ones to protect and serve us, all of us. We already have a sheriff's department. Why don't we make that bigger? and rebuild, raise that and rebuild it as well. But the police department, no, police department, organized gang, and their own, the only reason that they were invented was to catch, return, or kill black people, period. My next question is from Denny. Denny wants to know, was 45 or Giuliani involved in 9-11 in 2001 in any way? Was 45 or Rudy Giuliani in any way, shape, or form involved in 9-11? No, no, Denny. President Bush, though, however, was. 9-11 did not happen in a vacuum. The United States knew it was going to happen. Another thing to, to understand is that the Twin Towers were blown up. The reason that the Twin Towers were blown up, they weren't even the target. The target of 9-11 was the little tiny documents building, the building that had all of the government's a whole lot of documents in it that was kind of nestled between the Twin Towers. This was a federal building. That is the building. That was the target of destruction. That was a whole bunch of uh, lawsuits that were about to be brought to court that would have brought down a whole bunch of uh, political people, Republican people, the Bushes themselves. 9-11 was to destroy evidence. They killed thousands of people to destroy evidence, to keep some rich muckety mucks from uh, being found out about what they do in court. 9-11 was about destroying federal archives and they destroyed two buildings to destroy a little one. They destroyed the Twin Towers 
to destroy the National Archives. There you go. Um, but no, Rudy Giuliani and Donald Dub Truck had nothing to do with this. This was the United States government. It was our own government that did that. Three planes hijacked and nobody knew about it until they crashed. We were involved in that. Just like dropping the bombs on Hiroshima and Nagasaki, the United States blew up itself and blamed it on somebody else. Well, even though those, those other people were involved, yes, they were willingly involved for their own part of it. And they were handsomely paid. Okay. Next question is by Jose Me. Will blue states get bluer after the 2024 election? Great question. Will blue states get bluer after the 2024 election? Yes or no? Tara. Upside down. Yes, it went upside down. Yes. Yes, Jose. That was the weirdest thing. Yes, Jose. The uh, blue states are going to get bluer. There's going to be a lot more people voting. 2024 is going to be a lot of people are going to show up to vote. The next question I think this is Jose Means as well. Will the migrant crisis in blue states caused by the GOP hurt Democrats? Will the migrant crisis, will these crises of migrants, New York and California, you got all these despots sending all these poor people that just want a better life than from where they came from and are being used as political pawns. People, please understand the migrants have nothing to do with what where they were placed all right the people who own those buildings put those people in there those same people who own their buildings decided not to help the homeless people so don't conflict people putting homeless people in hotels with people not putting homeless uh, with people putting migrants in hotels with them not putting uh, homeless people in hotels Okay, two different problems, two whole different things. What we, again, we have to stop letting the GOP dumb us down. We have to stop picking up their own talking points. We have to call them out every time we see them. It is not the migrants' fault that they got put up in hotels and homeless people didn't. Okay, stop. Blaming the migrants. Stop blaming them. It's not their fault. They didn't put themselves on a bus and ship themselves to New York. Blame the people who did that. The people who did that did it to cause a problem. To make other people mad at immigrants. They want you to hate the immigrants. They want you to be mad. At these poor people who are only wanting, uh, who are seeking asylum, they want you mad. And then they want you, they want you to be pointing fingers. Well, you didn't help the homeless. Okay. No, they didn't. But they helped the people who didn't have nothing else, had, who aren't even citizens. They have no money. They have no nothing. They have no nothing. They have no nothing. Stop carrying water for the GOP. The migrants are not the problem. The GOP is the problem. If the people in the border states would do, follow our constitution on immigration, if they would do their job, we wouldn't have these problems. But no, they'll lie to you and say, this is all somebody else's fault. And then ignorance turns into violence, turns into disdain for people who were just trying to make a better life for themselves and their children. 
This is why it is so important to educate ourselves. To not, this is why it's so important to turn off that damn news. Because the news lies to you over and over and then repeats the lies. And then you think it's the truth. Dolores H. has a question. Oh, no, let me answer that question. Will the migrant crisis in blue states caused by the GOP hurt Democrats in the 2024 election? Will this made-up migrant crisis hurt Democrats in the upcoming election? No, it is not. It's going to shine a light on the GOP. And fortunately, I have to say, enough people are awakening to where they are not. They are not going to be in the dumbed down masses of the people who are only listening to what's going on over the radio or over the TV. Okay, this is why it is so important. Educate, educate yourself, read, be knowledgeable. Stop just listening to the news. Stop just listening to talking heads. Read for yourself. Explore for yourself. Don't take anything anyone says without a grain of salt. And that includes me. All right? Verify before you state something as being fact. Please. All right? Here you go. Did I throw up? I think I did. My next question is from Dolores H. Cash app went down. Yep, cash app went down. I've been telling y'all to prepare because this is going to come. And it's going to happen and it's going to happen and it's going to happen. And then one day, we may not have internet for a month. We are having... Coronal flares, coronal mass ejection, CMEs, coronal mass ejections from the sun. Giant balls of energy are leaping off of the sun on a direct trajectory with the earth. We have had more sunspots, CMEs than we've had my entire lifetime. We've had hundreds this month where this was something that used to be anomalous. It happened, but it was rare. Now it happens daily. Almost every day we have CMEs, X flares, M flares. These, this is radiation that, this is energy codes, photon light that has the ability to mess with our magnetosphere, can mess with um, radio transmissions on this planet, and does. And this, again, because of what man has done to this planet, this is why we're facing some of these things. Understand, at some point, we are going to lose the internet. It's going to go down. It may come back up and then go back down again. And this is going to be a way for the, the ones that are in charge to invoke panic, to make people behave badly. Prepare yourself for this. Know what you're going to do when you can't get online and get on YouTube or PayPal or Cash App, Facebook or WhatsApp. It's going to happen. Prepare yourself now so when it does, you won't be pulling your hair out or out there with a gun trying to shoot people because henny penny, the sky is falling and God, the world must be coming to an end because I can't log on to Facebook. Prepare, prepare, prepare. My next question is a personal one from Shay Shay. 
This is a great question. Shay Shay asks, my my son's dog Snowfall. Is my son's dog Snowfall a reincarnation of the dog called Ice Blue who passed away a few years ago? This is a great question. Universe creator, spirit guides, please answer this question for Shay Shay. Is the dog Snowfall a reincarnation of the dog Blue Ice who was passed on? Yes or no? Yes, Shay Shay. Uh, your son's dog Snowfall, that is Blue Ice all over again. He came. Oh, he came back to you. Let me read the card. Not, not just tell you it's a yes. You got the intuition card. There's your answer. Yes. Okay. Love. This is why he came back. Love, comfort, kindness, intuition, a good idea, a sensitive, thoughtful, introvert, cooperative, quiet, dreamy, imaginative, psychic, emotional, or dependent youth. This must be your son. Someone interested in learning about emotional issues. Yes, Shay Shay. Your dog is reincarnated from your other dog for your son. Congratulations. That is a wonderful, wonderful thing. My next question is also a personal one from Cheryl Ambrosia. Cheryl wants to know, what does 2024 look like for Cheryl? Okay, Cheryl, I'm going to pull three cards for you. Card number one, two, three. First card you got, Cheryl, you got new job. So if you are looking, you may be uh, uh, receiving or getting a new job in 2024. Good news in earthly matters, solid beginnings, setting goals, opportunity to increase incomes, books, negotiations, an open-minded person, students, scholars, one who is willing to learn, and someone you can count on. The second card you've got is decision. In 2024, you are going to have to make decisions. And this is a decision that I feel like you have been putting off. Um, you are not moving forward because the uh, lack of making this decision has kept you stagnant. No, Cheryl. Know that you cannot make a wrong choice. It may lengthen the amount of time that you have to do something, but the choice, any choice that you make will turn out to be the right one in time. Use uh, meditation. Ask your spirit guides. Pray and let the answers be revealed to you. Stop standing or sitting on the fence. It's time to make that decision that you know you need to make. Yes or no, do it or don't, but you've got to pull the trigger. You cannot just keep standing, uh, waiting for it just to miraculously resolve itself. So this, this card is stalemate, truce, sitting on the fence, crossroads, difficult decision, painful choices, stressful decisions, opposition, facing your fears, being torn between two relationships and di a divided loyalty. Make your choice. If it is a them, make a choice, yes or no. If it is a place, make a choice, yes or no. If it is a thing, make a choice, yes or no. Stay, go, keep it or let it go. Be here or don't be here. Make a choice. The third card you got is the chariot. And this is your final outcome. Everything is working in your favor, Cheryl. Victory is yours to have. This card, the chariot, is saying, victory, uh, victory is yours. Overcoming obstacles, success, ambition, determination, willpower, control, self-discipline, hard work, and focus. When you take care of you, when you focus on your needs, your best interests will be met. Make your decision, stand in your truth, and make your decisions for the best of yourself, 
nobody else. It's got to be for you, Cheryl. And everything is going to be coming up roses. Okay, there you go. My next question from Cheryl. Will the Russians who have invaded our government be found out, found and removed? Great question. Yes or no? Tarot universe creator, spirit guides. Will the Russians who are who have infiltrated our government be found, identified, and removed? Yes or no? Will the Russian, and they are spies, will the Russian spies who have infiltrated our government be found, identified, and removed? Yes, first card out. Here we go. Here's the answer. Yes, Cheryl. The 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 foreigners in, that are uh, sabotaging our government are being identified, and they will be removed. And guys, this is an ongoing effort. This is a partnership. And I kind of feel there's a couple of countries who are working together trying to find who the bad people are and identify them. All right. My next question is from Chase, a personal question. Chase wants to know, Chase says, my friend, my dear friend passed away. She will be buried on Tuesday, which was yesterday. Chase would like to know, is her friend okay in the afterworld? I wish you would have given me her name, Chase. But I'll ask it this way. Please, Universe Spirit Guides, Creator. The friend of Chase Z. Ah, here she is. Yes. Yes, Chase, she is fine. She is fine. She is where she needs to be. She is doing what she needs to do. You stop worrying about her, okay? So don't worry about your not being able to go to her funeral. It's okay. She's not at her funeral either, okay? She wasn't there either. She is, she's free, okay? Death is a door opening, not a door closing. Everything that was going on in her life, even at the end, even as sudden as this was, it was meant to happen the exact way that it did. She is where she is supposed to be. And she's free. You this message is for you. Patience is needed. Delayed news, patience needed. Ideas, inspiration, planning, vigilance. Protective, guarded. Fairness, one who is calculating and unconcerned about the feelings of others. Communicators, scientists, mathematicians, aviators, and travelers. And this message is for you, Chase. Work on the things that you need to that you're that you need to be working on for yourself. Your friend is okay. But the things that are in your life right now that you are questioning, sit in meditation, grab a piece of paper, write down your thoughts. And if you get answers to your questions, write those down as well. Your friend's untimely passing has got you feeling and thinking about things differently. And that's what you're supposed to do. There is a message in this for you, but you can only find this answer through meditation. Be still, be quiet. Write, write, write. Write what's on your heart, write what's in your mind. Write those questions that are plaguing you 
and then open your mind's eye, open your whole self to receive your answers. But your friend is okay. Even though everything that happened was so out of sorts, she is all right. And she, she knows she wasn't at her funeral either. It's okay. Uh, Julia J has a personal question. She says, a dog that was abandoned by every person who'd ever had her because she was a runner. A dog was abandoned by every person who had her because she was a runner. People got tired of chasing after her. Julia wants to know, can animals be here just to be here? Is their job to interact with others? Or is their job to be owned by other people? This is a fantastic question. This is a serious question because we as people, we people take other sentient beings and make them our pets. Take them from their mothers at a young age. And I am not speaking about myself. Got my little puppy when she was just barely six weeks old taken off of her mother's teeth and given to me. She had no say in where she was going or what her life was going to be like. She came from a Spanish-speaking family into an English-speaking family. For the first six weeks of my dog's life, the only language that she heard was Spanish. And at six weeks, she was given to me and immersed into a household that only spoke English. She had to learn everything, not once, but twice. Not only that, she was expected to learn how to go potty just so she could walk and uh, could go outside. She was supposed to know not to pee in the house. Guys, what I am saying about animals is that we have to step out of ourselves when we are talking about our animals or animals in general. Animals are sentient beings. They did not need our help into coming into this world. Dogs, cats, and other animals don't need our help existing in this world. We insert ourselves into their lives. Kidnap them, make them our slaves. Make animals work for us. Make them beg to be fed or loved. And animals being on this planet is just like ours. They are here to experience their life in this form. So if you own pets, if you have pets, I'm going to ask you to do one thing. Consider them with as much veracity as you consider your own self. If you wrong your pet, apologize. Don't force your animal to be your entertainment. They have bad days too. They have feelings and thoughts too. If they can understand your language, then guess what? Maybe they can speak it in some kind of way. And maybe you should open yourself up enough to try to learn its language since we expect it to learn ours. Animals are here just like us to live their best lives. It's when people become involved that we change that. All right, here we go. My next question, my last question is from Julia. Jack Smith wants Scott Perry's phone. Will he get it? And what is Scott Perry hiding? So here we go. Last question. Jack Smith wants Scott Perry's phone. Will he get it? And what is Perry hiding on his phone? Perry is hiding all the Proud Boys that he was talking to, texting with, making plans with. Uh, Perry is hiding financial wherewithal, money that he sent to various groups. That is what Scott Perry is hiding. Will, Tarot Universe creator, will 
Scott Perry, will Jack Smith get Perry's phone? Yes or no? Yes. Don't worry about it. He going to get that phone. Scott Perry's phone is, he's, uh, he's tried to wipe it five times. He's even tried to jail, jailbreak it to, to, uh, to uh, get everything off. But guess what? If it's in the web, once you put it on the web, it's there forever. It don't never go away. You might not can find it. But somebody can. All right, y'all. That's the end of the show. Let's go ahead and do the weather for this week. We've got a lot going on, okay? Arizona had terrible storms yesterday. I am expecting those storms to transpire over here in Nevada, in California, Oregon, and Washington, all the way up the coast. Um, this, these are man-made ones, so expect them, just them clouds to just form, and then for some crazy storm to just start dropping buckets of water. East Coast. You're still dealing with the remnants of Lee. It's going to go ahead. It's going to shoot all the way up north. Um, Canada um, and the Yukon are going to have some bad weather. Uh, like I said, there may be early snowfall from uh, Hurricane Lee uh, above um, Alaska. Uh, not Alaska, but in Canada up there in the Yukon. I keep wanting to say Saskatchewan, but I'm not sure if that's the right area that I'm talking about. But anyway, that wet wet force is going to meet cold air coming across. So there is a chance of an early snowfall in the, the northernmost uh, part of this continent. Um, we have three more hurricanes that are in motion. Two of them are dangerous ones. Uh, two of them are going to make contact with land. We've got one coming very, one that's uh, intensifying in strength now. Um, and that one is going to be a danger to the uh, panhandle, to Texas, to the, to the Gulf of Mexico. It's going to be a danger. It's going to be dangerous. So again, listen to your meteorologists and be prepared. Also, I have told everybody, please subscribe to Dutch Sense. Please, we are, this earth is going to be rocking and rolling. Um, it, we, are, we are due for a large earthquake, for a large earthquake and for a large volcanic eruption. We are on watch for both of those right now. So be prepared. If you're, if you're listening to anything, listen to your meteorologist. This is the time to make sure that if, if you are, keep your car full, put that little go bag in there that's got a change of clothes, a dry pair of shoes, in case you just got to leave your house for a little while, you will at least have clothes to change into. Keep water in your car. Keep a bag of nuts or something in there so you'll have something to eat. Think smart. We are in some changing times. And we have a lot of weather issues all over the United States to deal with. Any one of us at any time could be in an emergency. And just what you have in your car may be what you have to survive on. So stay prepared. Get prepared if you're not already. All right? All right. I love you. Um, oh, my goodness. Uh. Oklahoma. Oh, oh, okay. Be prepared. North Texas, Oklahoma. Be prepared for a uh, uh, tornado. Tornadoes. Swift moving air, circular movement. Oklahoma, North Texas, middle of the United States, Bible Belt. Stay prepared for fast moving winds. All right, stay prepared, period. All right, if you are still here, let's go ahead and do this Reiki prayer. Go ahead, exhale. Set your intention for this day. My intention is to be present within myself. My intention is to give myself permission to be, do, achieve everything.
little thing I've ever dreamt of, I give myself permission to receive it. All right, here we go, y'all. Just for today, I let go of anger. I let go of worry. I am grateful. I work on myself and I am kind to all living things. Namaste, namaste, namaste. Happy Wednesday, y'all. If you have questions that you would like answered, personal or political, drop them in the space below this video. I love you. I love you. I love you. If you would like a reading from me, psychictanya9 at gmail.com. Let Tanya's magic work for you. All your inquiries, any magic you need, psychictanya9 at gmail.com. Let me be your personal, the witch. I love you. I love you. I love you. Bye-bye, y'all. Namaste.